Howdy. Welcome back. See, I got a new setup here. With the camera in front of the window and the light on me. Hopefully that would make things look a little better. And got a special eBay auction window I want to show you guys here. I've been searching for one of these things since I was a young man and I saw a picture of it. I've never actually seen one in person. And for years I was just wheeling and dealing and searching and looking and deals going bad or didn't have the money at the time and all kind of things like that. Finally found one. Oh, and a guy complained about me using the exact one knife to open the boxes. About an old Rapala filleting knife from when I was a teenager. Bigger knife. This was supposed to have been shipped priority mail where it had like Tuesday, Wednesday at the latest. Here it is Friday after I did an investigation, got an investigation started rather, Wednesday afternoon. The investigator got them off their butts. This thing was languishing in Elk Grove Village, Illinois, like the eastern border. And uh, just, it was just sitting there doing nothing. And 16 hours later, I didn't got to 18 hours, that, that just about enough. You don't let things languish like that. Oops. Peanuts out. Jesus. Seriously? A bunch of freaking packing peanuts. That looks about as long as the 66 AB Power Master over there, not my honest opinion. Oh, you know what I, what? They're using, oh, I can't get them things off of my, I hate packing peanuts, the styrofoam is staticky. Now they're using clear tape on this where I can't see. I had to see where the tape is to save the uh, packing materials. Oh, come on, Sam, not now. Could have waited. Moves around under your door, but when I'm in the middle of doing something. clean his claws on my DeWalt uh, tool bag. Yeah, I don't use packing tape on the, on the bubble wrap and stuff anymore. You can't, you can't see it to get it off. So I use uh, masking tape. It holds, it holds just fine for the amount of time it needs to do its job. You don't ruin the bubble wrap. Red, I'm trying to get it off. And 
there she is. Doesn't look as bad in person. Now this, this is supposed to be plastic, a plastic barrel sleeve. It's got a soda straw barrel molded inside of that or pushed inside. I will find out when I get it apart. And uh, this is all alloy, just, just like the original uh, Winchester Model 70s were. It, it started building in 1936 and was basically an improved version of the K98 Mauser that was that the Germans used against the British and the other allies and stuff that were used in the short Lee Enfield uh, originally 303 caliber I've got from 1918 sitting over there. The bling on that part's a little better than I thought. And here's the serial number right here. right there the numbers here are 00009857 so September 80 and here is the bolts are both, both bent that way. It's like the original Model 70 standard. It had a plain ball on the end of the bolt. Uh, the, the standard deluxe, or uh, some name like that, I gotta look it up again. I, I forget the moment. The, the fancier one that had a better wood and the checkering that was right here went all the way under and all the way around the pistol grip here. And uh, this isn't folks wood, this isn't plastic folks, this is real honest to God hardwood. I haven't looked it up. Manual cocking. Right right there, look right towards on the, the, the end of the bigger part of that funnel shape at, at the end of the bolt probe. Seal. This, this one's got a seal on it. Finally. You see how far that bolt comes up? I got a couple of scopes here and some a couple different mounts for high mounts. We're gonna have to try to try to get the scope out of the way of the bolt. Just like a real Winchester. <laughs> it's model 70 that is to say. button here that's the safety to push the button out on this side that thing doesn't move at all it's real hard to pull the bolt back so the oil's gummed up <clears throat> this thing's supposed to weigh more than more without the scope than my 160 pal gun does up there with the scope, and that's not right. This actually weighs a little less than the, the 160 without the scope. But it's got this, it looks like a powder burner barrel on it with the, 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 the barrel sleeve. Yeah, it's called a Crossman Model Number 70, you know, the hashtag mark. It also stands for pound or number, depending on the usage. Crossbow arms fit right here. Is there a piece missing off of that? Just look at the rear sight here. There's no no V groove on it or nothing. Somebody either looks like it was with something. There's a little groove right here, like a, there was something that was on there, it ain't there now. Well that does have a, that's got a 
See, so if you pull that out like that, and it takes one CO2 cartridge in there, I just don't know how to get it out. So that, that one, one of the first time I fired, it actually did have a, like a slight bit of gas left. But yeah, the bolt probe's got a seal on the end. Sweet. But it doesn't look as scratched up. The barrel doesn't look as scratched up in person as it did in the in the, the seller pictures I was showing you guys. It's a weird, weird. Near center, I almost swear to the, uh, the, the, the V block part is broken off. See a little block in the middle of the wings? There's a groove in there, like something got broke off that was electronically, like a particle beam weld broke or something. And those are really hard to get to from what the guys were saying. But not to worry. I don't care because I ain't going to use them to open sights anywhere since, since I wear trifocals. Oh, and just like the rear, the real Winchester Model 70, that front side is actually part of the barrel. The barrel and all this here is one big seven pound chunk of steel. It's all machined out of one solid piece, which is incredibly difficult to, to get the barrel round and machine the front, that wrap front sight on there. That's just what they look like. That's, that's really easy to You know, like that. Oh, you can snap shoot this thing. That's beautiful. You just love stuff like that. Okay, well, anyway. Put this thing away before I stick my thumb again. Pull this up to access the compartment. It's just weird. I thought you might. I thought you might pull up on this thing to to pull the. get this little plunger right here to go that way to let it out so let's monkey it for a minute then it's gonna come out of you can't get get this to go that far enough Tight fit for that for that uh, for where the this 12 gram CO2 cartridge goes. So you, uh, you'd have to do a lot of modifying to get a second one in here. But what I read, I can't remember if it was on a forum or the Facebook airgun groups. One of these in this Model 70 is supposed to give 40 shots. But to modify that, it only gets about 15 or 20. So you got the eight nine hundred PS uh, eight hundred nine hundred feet per second, something like that, that'd be nice. Get some get some more get some serious horse pressure on this thing. Get some work, wipe down some oil on the inside too. But Oh, that, this, this doesn't look bad here, but I'm going to take this apart and soak all the old gluing off, polish it up in a little nice and I'll re-glue it. So that'll look nice. 
going to leave it stock on the inside, so it's got a little more authenticity where you're not going to see it anyway. Oh, here's something else where this thing is just like the Winchester Model 70, which again, as I said, is an improvement of the K98 Mauser from World War One. Everybody was using after the war to pump deer and whatnot. Now. Here and here, the barrel is bolted down. Just like the real Winchesters, that barrel and the action bolted absolutely solid to this stock. It ain't moving, it ain't floating, it ain't doing nothing. It's just going to stick there and do its job. air guns powerless. They were called powerless when I was a kid. When I was 17 when they started building these things. I was 14 when I bought the uh, 760 Power Master Variant Wonder that was built in June of 1970. Again, when I was 14, I saved my newspaper money to buy that one. But anywho, that is a collector's item. We save those. Let me, let me just show you a comparison. How about that? Okay, now. It says Crossman Air, Air Guns. Yeah. Crossman Air Guns Power. Okay. That's the old one. Now, this is what the new one looks like. Got the new Crossman logo on it, we're all familiar with. Okay. And, uh, let's store above 120 degrees Fahrenheit or 48 point nine centigrade. Not the new consumption but, uh, but yeah, that's that's what the new one looks like. So we'll save this old one in our uh, collection of old super pels and, and loops and junk like that. starts, the old oil lubricants start to turn into like a sticky varnish. That thing is really sticky. I had to add three or four drops of, of pelican oil in there to, to get that darn thing to loosen up a little bit. We're still concerned about how high that bolt sticks up, just like, like the Winchester. You got the eyepiece and the scope's got to come back about here, so you got to make sure that the eyepiece bell is behind behind the edge of this bolt shaft. Let's we can find a seal. Good bolt. It's got a, it's got a, a seal on the bolt. Sailor once in a while, like 
I don't know, 15, 20 bucks for 40 of them. It was a really good deal. Every once in a while, we all, when they, when they go on sale like that, somebody passes the, the word around and we all go in there and start them up. Two cartridge in there, that thing just wants to hang loose. Um, okay. Got a couple of different side kinds of mounts in here. I even got some mid rise uh, hawk weaver mounts, but I can't use those on this. I have to use some gamma high mounts or something to get past that bolt. I got two scopes here to try. And since this Optima 39 by 32 9AO is as the where the objective bell and the eyepiece bell is a smaller diameter, let's go ahead and then try that one first. machine opening here. Again, the miles are Thank you. 
make sure your anxiety over it. Get this thing here fast enough for a lump of stone. That's a shirt. I'm going to let them go up here and bug for the next layer. One person saw that layer. Back that way as far as I can get it. But just have to see how that works. Okay. Okay, see? That's what I'm talking about the bolt and versus the scope and the bell and the adjuster and all that stuff. You've got the, the, the scope has to clear. Now I might be able to get away with some, with some hawk. Mid, 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 medium rise mounts, maybe. I got a pair, but it's made for a weaver rail. You know, the, the, the notchy Picatinny looking one. That, you know, it clears. Then you can see the front sight. Yeah, I got that. I've got that back as far as I can get and leave any longer scope. He's got pretty good uh, eye clearance. Here, let me see if I can show you. Okay, right about there. This, this bell has to move all the way up against the mount. And I've got the mouse lined up at the edge of this machine op uh, breach opening here, for lack of a better expression. That is just, that's gorgeous. I might just get some mid-rise mid hot, hot uh, dovetail mounts. I don't know, 20, 18, 20 bucks, but they're good mounts and they're well worth the money. I've been switching all my rifles over to those. Six minutes before I get up and shut it off, or I'll shut itself off. Anyway, all right. Wish they'd have something I could latch that in. Then have a CO2 cup, I don't think, to uh, take that steel. sitting so high that hot mid-rise mounts might work out guys so I'm going to try it. I'm not going to work on this one tonight. I had to tighten these thumb screws here. section. I'll have to place in a picture of uh, a pre-64 model 70 so you guys can see what I'm talking about.
clearly scaled down about 50% to fit the, the size of this particular model. And uh, it won't be able to wrap under as far because of this, this metal CO2 thing. Auctioneers, he said it works. It's, you know, they usually say that it works or it shoots or something, something basically to that effect. Two. Let us see what we shall see. Drop or two of oil on the end of the CO2 cartridges. Okay. Cost me premier ultra magnum ten and a half grade not seventy seven cal. That's what I wanted. Okay. Camera two. We will test fire this thing a few times just to see if everything's copacetic. I'll take it apart and not upgrade the, the innards anyway. But anyhow, Crossman Premium Ultra Magnum, it seems as the hollow points just doesn't have, doesn't have that little tiny hole in the end. 10.5 grain so it's going to be good for 177 cal long distance shots and I love having that seal on the end of the bolt probe that is groovy you know though the bolt the bolts on this one once you get it cocked it's way easier to push forward to, to get the pellet in place and with extra room for because you're using the higher mounts for this bolt you got more room to get your fingers in there like that you see what i'm saying okay the fortune favor the foolish you see how far back back up that 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 bolt has to go that's why you need these higher mounts even the Winchester model 70s are like that I hope I don't have a pellet stuck in because I didn't see where that one might might have wanted to go well, here we go again I can't get my finger in there you stick to my finger sometimes they want to turn upside down and everything else It's shooting a little low. I was in at the, at the dot on the red dot on the left there, and I it got about three quarters of an inch under it. But since I oiled the bolt and everything, this thing is getting it's cocking way easier. Okay, hit the bottom edge of the, the red dot on the left there to the left of the sea and celebrating I noticed that the, the, the ball on the end of the, the bolt probe is plastic too because the the bolt arm is rusting
It is, it is great to be able to find a shirt sure, a Model 70, though. Like, when you, you knew they were around when you were, say, like a teenager like I was, but you never actually saw one in person. But I've shot K98 Mausers and 7 and 8 millimeter Mausers. You know, Germans, spoiled of war, all that, all that rot. Well, this was a pleasure. This is indeed a pleasure. Huh. These are these gamma high mounts are see throughs, so I did. I used the see throughs and used the open, the open front blade. Almost drilled that. I got a little high to the left of center on that dot. Wow. Now, how about that, folks? I'm enjoying this. I don't know how many shots I'm going to get of it, and I don't care. If I only got 12 or 15 shots, I would get a lot more power. That's fine with me because it's a hunting rifle anyway. You know? And when you're when you're hunting, how many shots do you really need? Ooh-wee, that alloy is getting cool. Okay, that was a little better. Just trying to see how to use the seat, these seat, these see-through mounts here with the front blade. Just out of just for practice sake, I haven't done it in years. It's so easy to close the bolt though that it, it it seals up nice, but it's real easy to close. That's absolutely wonderful. Almost got the center looking through the scope that time. The scope you got to aim high with the front, the blade, the with the see-through mounts back here in the front blade sight. You just got to learn how to get the bottom of the see-through mount lined up with the with the with the the blade here. You can see the tip of the blade and about half of the the ramp, so to say. Oops. I'm gonna just stick with these high mounts. That's I'm not wild about it, but you, you definitely need room to get your fingers in there to, in the way that bolt swings so high to be able to work it. Okay, open sights again. And I jerked a little. That was my fault. Getting left a little left the center of that duck. This thing's not that loud in here. That this fat plastic barrel shroud is doing a great job. Now I gotta see if that's a steel barrel or a, a, a like a brass or bronze or whatever. Because I will not use alloy pellets in this thing. Strictly lead. It's got enough power. I can I can mess around with different weights of pellets and everything and see what works. I think it's definitely pulling a little to the left. See how easy that is? Wonderful bolt on this thing. In fact, when I'm using the open heights, the, 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 the comb on the stock here is just about right for me, too. Right center. Okay, it hits me. Oh, I see it now. The first shot I took went right in the middle of the P. <laughs> There, finally nailed it dead center. It's only a couple of yards, but it's fun anyway, right? Okay. 
Okay. That alloy doesn't, the alloy uh, big breech section there doesn't feel real cold either. So I'm thinking that Mauser style breech on that thing is soaking up a lot of that cold so that it, the action doesn't get so cold. That's just a little stroke of genius the way they copied the, the old copy of that the old, uh, Model 70 Winchester that close mm. to where it uh, that, that big chunky breech actually soaks up that cold so the action doesn't get so cold so fast. Interesting. Well, how about that folks? That was with a ton and a half grain pellet. That's about as heavy as I'm willing to go in 177. So far as uh, Springer's or these lower, low to mid power CO2 rifles are concerned. But from scratches and scrapes and stuff on this thing, I can tell that this is real wood. And see that you got a CO2 carpet in there, that thing, that thing doesn't flop around like a dead fish. And keeping this this bolt oiled in here and the seal that goes up about there and this thing and it, it, that's sweet it works nice and at least I found a good use for these gamma high mounts I got three or four sets of them you know this optimus scope fits this thing just right and leaves enough room over in here for your little finger your couple of last little fingers to you know, you know you can get your fingers in there when you're working the bolt, so and you can look through these see-through mount, the see-through part of the mount, and use that front blade side. That's darn accurate close up. If you can hold steady enough, like wow, that worked. Out, that worked out pretty good. Now with, with my trigger stick or my bench bags, man, this thing's got to be dead on the nuts accurate. Those, those other guys are right. These things really are accurate. They're worth a couple hundred dollars. I paid two hundred thirteen dollars and twenty five cents for this thing, shipping and all out the door. Definitely worth it. Come on. Okay. Now they both came in. This came at the same time. I got another little little goodie here for you. This is a large, large Rapala filleting knife I bought when I was 16 years old. These, these are blonde handles. That's actually turned to golden blonde, golden brown just from sheer use. It's still sharp. And that's the original uh, real leather sheath for it. I had to, I had to wash it and scrub it with, with different things. Saddle soap would have been handy. Okay, anyway. This goes with the Winchester, by the way, for a very good reason. This is an old Denmark checkering kit. You know the fancy diamond groove things you see on on the better gun stocks. That's what. This is the tools you do that with. Box in it. And it says 418. There's three handles and six of these different little little cutting bits. You push. Some you can pull with, some you have to push. It depends on how they're made. You make different ones to do different things where you can even do like two or three grooves at a time. And this is uh, 18 LPI or lines per inch. The original uh, Winchester Model 70s, the pre-64s back to 1936, 
all had 18 lines per inch, so I, I made sure I, I got the right tools in there. A couple of, he, he said, the lady told me when, the, when her husband was still around, God rest him, used three of these tools and then didn't, then didn't really mess with it anymore. And uh, I'll just take that out, it's a little smushed, so that thing's been piled under something in the closet for a while. This is a, it's called a starter special. Dunbar starter special, starter kit. So, and after that was $100, $107.24 out the door, again from eBay. Really, you can find some really nice stuff on eBay if you put your nose to the grindstone and try. It took me a good part of my life since I was a young man to finally get one of these Model 70 Crossmans. And um, then I tried checkering when I was a kid, but the checkering file and my, my, my little mini mic Dremel, I burned up <laughs> uh, port and heads eventually, trying to do the checkering. I, I, it didn't look real good. At this time, uh, oh, you know what? I need a diamond-shaped gauge thing you're supposed to use, too. A couple more little things uh, in a flexible steel ruler. Uh, you watch the guy at MidwayUSA.com sell their gun parts and regular gun parts and all that, and bullets or whatever. Well, he's also a gunsmith, and he shows how to use all this stuff, and step-by-step -step shows you how to do it on a YouTube video. So, over the next, I don't know how many episodes it's going to take, this rifle is getting restored. And it's going to be a medium walnut color with the original Model 70 standard, as it was called. The standard and the standard deluxe and another name I can't remember, like I said at the beginning. But anyway, it's, I'm going to make this thing look as much like a Winchester Model 70 as possible. It's a fine rifle, it's light, well balanced, it shoots good. Even with open sights, it's wonderful. So, we will do it the honor of making it look like what a Model 70 is supposed to look like. So, stay tuned for this. This is going to be my best one ever. So, good Lord, Bill, and Creeks Don't Rise, we'll see you again. <laughs>